Hi everyone, welcome back to GameMakerCast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at the eight directional movement, and we're gonna take it a step further where we introduce some actions such as this punching. And you can see that we have punching happening in eight directions, and we can expand on this system to add things like shooting or interaction with objects. But this is the basics that we're gonna build, so let's roll the intro and let's get right into it. So the one thing before we get coding I want to talk about is angles in Game Maker Studio. We're going to be handling this by figuring out the angle of what our character is moving at. And to do this, we need to use a function called point direction. Now, if I open up this guy right here and particularly the step event, let's maximize this so we can see what we're working with. Now, you can see a few things that we kind of use on and off here. We have some horizontal input here and we're just taking the keyboards D key and A key, which will give us a value between negative one, zero, and one. And then we're doing the same with some vertical input, but this time we're using the S and W key. Now, what we're gonna be using is point direction based off of a zero, zero location, and then we're gonna pass in the horizontal and vertical input, which remember is gonna be negative one, zero, or one, and then we're gonna assign that value to our image angle. So if I run this game right now, we should kind of see this in action. So our arrow is facing to the right, which is zero degrees. If I hit my right key and up, you can see that we move 45, 90, 135, and you get the point. We can go around a, in a full circle here. So these are the angles that we're gonna be using, and it's basically the fundamental code that we're gonna be using to actually start working with the player ourselves. So let's close this now that we have the point direction handled and the angles, and let's actually take a look at what we're gonna be coding. Now, as I said, we have two different state machines that we're gonna be using. If we open up our object character and we go to the create event, you can see at the bottom, I've left in a state facing and a state action. So these are the two state machines that we're gonna be building. We can find what these actually mean if we open up the scripts and we go to enumerators, you can see we have a whole bunch inside state facing. And then we have our different actions and this is what the system is gonna work on and that's how it's gonna build the sprite that we need. If we move forward by opening up the step event here, you can see if I maximize this, we have that piece of code that we talked about earlier in here where we're getting the direction of where our character is moving. We have some horizontal and vertical movement and then just down underneath here, we have some placeholders. So if I hit F5 and I run my game, my character can move on the screen in any direction that they want. However, we don't have any animation. So let's get working on the facing state animation first. So we'll come down to our placeholders underneath state machine and then facing state decision. Now I'll try to go through this a little bit quicker because it is a lot of typing and I don't really think you guys just wanna sit there and watch me type. So one decision that I made early on is our player needs to have the ability to have an idle state. So this means that before we choose any facing decision here, we have to make sure that we are not already moving. So we'll create a new variable called is moving and make sure that we are only gonna decide which way we're facing if we are moving. So that means that we can come up here and we can create a local variable called is moving and let's use a ternary operator here where we could just say if the horizontal input does not equal zero or the vertical input does not equal zero, then set this value to true, otherwise it's false. So this is just like taking an if statement and putting it on a single line. Now that we have whether or not our character is moving, if we aren't moving, we can come in here and we can start writing our switch statement. So just like before, we wanna make sure that we switch on our point direction variable. And this PD is coming from all the way here at the top, and that's getting our eight directions that we're moving in. Now comes the cumbersome task of typing everything in to say, if we are moving a certain way, such as up, then we are gonna set our state facing to be the state facing enumerator of up. And now with some video magic, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the rest here. All right, so I filled in everything here so you can see that we're switching on the point direction. If we're facing upwards, we'll just set the state to up. If we're facing diagonally to the right, then we'll set it diagonally to the right and up. So we have a whole bunch of different ones here. And again, they refer to the enumerator. 
Now, the next thing we want to do is work on this facing state. Now, this is, we've kind of already done this, but we want it to have two separate state machines just in case we needed to do something later on. So this means that we're going to have to switch based off of this state here. So we could say if this current state is going to be state underscore facing and up, then what do we want to do? Well, we're going to set a variable and it's going to hold a part of our sprite in there. So I'm going to come to the top. I'm going to make a new local variable and I'll call this sprite facing and I'll set it to nothing for now. If I come back down to where I've been working, if I'm facing up, then I want the sprite facing to be up. Now, once again, with some video magic, I'll just quickly place the rest of them in. And now you can see that we're checking the state that we're facing, and then we're changing the variable, which is a string, to match. If we open up our sprites here, they're going to match the second, or sorry, the third item in our sprites. So we have SPR character down diagonal right idle. So if I open up my character here and I look up down diagonal right, this will be the option that happens. Now, obviously my characters are all facing to the right. So if I want to flip them, for instance, this one, which I'm going to be facing to the left, I want to make sure that I change my image X scale to negative one. And because I'm doing that here, this means that I have to come up to the top here. And after I switch any of these statements here, I'm going to change my image X scale to just a regular one that will reset it back to normal. Now we're almost done. If we go all the way down to the bottom, we have a couple more placeholders here. We have the attack and then the action state and then finally the animation. The attack is pretty simple. We're just going to check to see if the space key has been pressed down. And if it has been pressed down, then we're going to set a new variable called state action. It's going to be equal to our enumerator state action. And in this sense, we're going to have attack. So to finish off this attack state and any other action states that we have, we want to make sure that our action state does not equal attacking. And if we are currently moving, so we can say if is moving, then we want to do something. Otherwise, we will set our state action to equal state action, which is our enumerator, and we'll set it to idle. If we are moving, then we want to set it to walking. And if we aren't, or sorry, if we are already attacking, we just want to leave it as attacking. So we'll just end our if statement there. The final thing, just like before, we built a sprite facing variable. Now we're going to have a sprite action variable. So we'll come back up to where we have our local variables here. We'll say VR sprite action, and we'll set that to nothing. We go all the way back down. We're going to need a switch statement again. So we'll say switch based off of the action state. And I'll make sure I spell that correctly. And then we are going to have an idle state, a walking state, and an attacking state. So when we are in the idle state, we want to set that variable that we created to idle. Again, if we're in the walking, we'll set it to walk. And attacking, we'll set it to punch. And once again, these states are actually referring to, if we come over here and we look at our character, we have idle punch and walk so now we have our character facing and we also have our character actions the last thing we need to do is actually write the small little animation system to handle everything for us the way the animation system is going to work is it's going to look for a specific sprite based off of our two variables and if that sprite exists then we'll set the sprite index to that current sprite so we'll have a local variable called sprite and we want to use a function called asset get index and this is going to accept a string so we know that our character starts with spr underscore character we'll add our underscore underneath and then we want to pass in the sprite facing which will be down down diagonal up right etc and then we have another underscore and then finally we need our sprite action which will be things like idle punch or walk the final thing I want to do is make sure my sprite is not equal to no one so that we actually have a sprite. And then I'll set my sprite index to that particular sprite there. The one thing that I also want to show you is if I go to my workspace and I go to the object character and I click on animation end, I want to show you that if the animation has ended and my action state is attacking, then we just switch back to the idle state. Now, if I hit F5, as long as I haven't made any mistakes, you can see that I'm facing right. If I click the left key, I stay facing left, up, down, and let's go diagonal up. 
diagonal down and you can see that we are walking around and when I hit my space key you can see that the animation is playing for the punch in every direction that we have so just to quickly go over it because it was kind of a lot of code here if we go all the way to the top we'll kind of minimize our regions here we have things for our movement and then we have a variable to decide whether we are actually moving and then we put together two different strings which is the direction we're facing and then the action we are performing then finally we look up that sprite based off of those two events such as facing and action and then we check to see the sprite exists and then we assign the sprite to the actual object itself and that is our eight directional movement with a little bit of bonus with idle and animation such as punching thank you all for watching if you would like the full source code to this tutorial and the rest of the tutorials all you have to do is show a little support on Patreon like these amazing users here. Jujub84, Victor, Jesus, Ashby, Andrea, Edward, Manuel, Paul, Robert, and Annie. Thank you everyone for showing support and I'll see you in the next video. In this video, I'm going to be giving away the game Vampire. Pause the video, copy the link below, and enjoy the game.